Okay. Well, uh, hi everybody. Uh, hi viewers. Uh, today, uh, our guest is uh, Professor John Wilanski from Stanford, Stanford University. And our topic is the academic ethics of open access to research scholarships. scholarship. Our association was established in 2019 uh, to increase awareness among uh, awareness about ethics among academicians in in Turkey and uh, maybe in other countries as well uh, to accomplish our uh, goals to achieve our goals we are doing some carrying out some activities uh, with uh, well known uh, academicians and scientists all over the world and today our guest is professor john uh, velinsky first of all I must. Uh, I should say that uh, I'm really grateful uh, that uh, John uh, uh, uh, dedicated his time to us. Uh, I know he is very busy, and also he's a very well-known uh, academician all over the world. Uh, thank you and uh, welcome, uh, John. How are you? I'm good, and thank you, Larry. I appreciate this opportunity, and uh, ethics are a very important aspect of my work, especially around access to knowledge. Uh, uh, today we will, uh, Yusuf Istam uh, Bolat will help me he, technically, uh, he's from uh, uh, Kahramanmaraş University, uh, Kahramanmaraş İstiklal University, uh, he will assist us. Okay, uh, John, uh, so what do we understand uh, when we say open access to research? How can we define that? Uh, very simply, Fari, by, th by thinking about free access. If you come across a research article online, are you able to download and read it? Um, and that's a very simple point because uh, about 70% of the research literature requires a subscription, um, typically with your institution, a university, um, or a credit card payment that can be 30 or 40 US dollars. Um, and so for about 30% of the literature, uh, it's free to read. And that is what we think of as open access. What it means is you can access the research and that it's open to the world. Well, uh, when it comes to, maybe some people can uh, financially afford that, but uh, when it comes to the researchers in underdeveloped countries or developing countries, many academicians might not be able to uh, afford that. And uh, this might create a big problem in the development of uh, science. What do you say about that? Yes, I mean, it's, it is a global problem that uh, Harvard and Stanford cannot afford all of the literature uh, because of the great expense. Um, but in the global South, it is a, a greatly pressing problem. And that's where the ethics come in that uh, I stand on a principle of a human right to knowledge. Um, it's part of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that the United Nations has adopted. And it is to me very fundamental that the research that we do is committed to the improvement and benefit of humankind. Uh, and therefore people should have a right to that knowledge. Um, it is expensive to publish, uh, but there are other ways of paying for that than locking it up. Uh, we have uh, some other guests from uh, other universities, from Chukro University in uh, Adana, uh, Adana, Birsel Aybek. He's an uh, associate professor. And Dolunay Yazıcı, uh, she is a student of uh, that uh, PhD, I guess. Uh, I want to welcome them as well. Okay, so uh, when, uh, dear... <laughs> Birsel and Dolunay, whenever you have questions, you can uh, ask uh, John, right? It, uh, I will ask my next question to John. John, what is the relationship between academic Thank you. and open access? Uh, be sorry, be I missed the first word, academic. Ethics and what is the relationship between academic ethics and open access to research and scholarship? Oh, yes. yes, so the, there is an ethical principle. I mean, academic ethics is a broad concept that has that deals with the fairness uh, and treatment of subjects, research subjects. It deals with issues like plagiarism. It deals with the integrity of our research. Um, but I would argue that it's an ethical principle um, to share your work. Um, it is ethically wrong, if you like, um, to keep your work from the people that you are studying, for example. It is questionable to hide the data 
um, or to keep the data that you have collected. So I think there is underneath um, academic work, there isn't a profit motive, there's a sharing motive. There is a, a ethical principle that the work we do is for the benefit of the world um, and that universities pay us to be professors for the benefit uh, and of part the world. Of that payment, part of that obligation of being a professor is to ensure your work is as widely distributed as possible and available to everyone who might be interested or, or who might be able to use that work. And that for me is a academic ethical principle. It has been called historically a spirit of uh, a communalism, a co uh, the idea of a commons, that we're contributing to a knowledge commons. Um, and the way that research is distributed right now in the majority is contrary to that. It's proprietary. Uh, it is treated as a commodity, not as part of a commons. Well, then, then you are right. I certainly agree with you, but then another problem rises here, the financing of the research and uh, the journals. What can you say about that? Uh, if, you, if we cannot finance some especially expensive uh, research, uh, that will be a big problem also yes. uh, as well. And it will, that will maybe uh, ban the, uh, uh, damage the uh, development of the science as well. Yes, there are a, a number of responses to that. Let me start with um, one example that uh, has con first connected me with Turkey about 20 years ago. Um, one response has been to develop tools for publishing um, that are shared, not just the research, but the tools for publishing uh, to reduce some of the costs. And as part of that, my, the Public Knowledge Project, which I started about 22 years ago, has developed open source software that is free software for publishing journals. Um, and I'm very proud of the fact that Turkey was one of the first countries to adopt this open source software called Open Journal Systems. Um, and that if I read your journal, it uses yeah. OJS, our yeah. software. And so that has been one of our contributions to this question, but it's not enough. The software and the tools are one aspect, um, but there still are people involved who need to be paid. There are still um, other costs um, involved, the servers, the computers. Um, and so our approach has been to say, that right now the libraries are spending about $10 billion around the world to finance research. Um, and that $10 billion is quite expensive. And there's arguments about whether it's too much. I think it is, but um, whether it's not enough, some people think it's, they want more. But the point is that $10 billion is paying for that research and it could be open. There's no reason for the libraries to lock up the research. Uh, people would still go to the universities in Turkey, even if the research was free to the universities. And the same applies to the universities here in the United States. So the libraries can continue and should continue ethically to support the publishing of journals. What they should not support is the locking up of that research. So think about it for a moment. Think of it as a, very simply, a $10 billion check that the libraries write collectively with thousands of signatures at the bottom. Um, although we don't use checks anymore, so maybe that's not going to, <laughs> it's going. <laughs> it's going to work as an idea. But that $10 billion, the libraries could write the same check with one change. And that is the publishers make the work open. The publishers get the same money and the research is open. Now, would the libraries continue to pay? Yes, because ethically they need that research. That is their service, is to support the sharing of knowledge. That's why we have libraries. And so they would not pull out of that because that would be the end of the library. So how does that sound? Yeah. Uh... Well, uh, there is, we know that uh, there is a gap between uh, developed countries and underdeveloped countries. And this gap is uh, day by day increasing, not decreasing. Uh, and it seems that it's not possible for the underdeveloped countries to catch up with the developed countries. And 
they cannot uh, reach the knowledge. They cannot reach the education and they cannot reach the knowledge. What can you say about that? No. Yes, so the what I just proposed is the current situation. That is the global south is not paying, the global south is paying some portion of that $10 billion, but I'm not asking for it to pay any more. Um, and so this is not a request for more money. The Global South is using the software. The Global South is publishing an open access. The Global South is in a communal shared economy. So uh, the open journal systems that we produce is used by 26,000 journals, most of them in the Global South. So their software is free and they're sharing their knowledge for free. And so that economy of the Global South is the model. And all I'm asking is that the Global North take a lesson from the South and begin to share its knowledge using the same resources that it's spending right now. So this isn't to change the economy, it's to change the ethical principle of access. Well, I, I believe that uh, the quality of research is also directly related with uh, this is, uh, system, how you reach the information. What can you say about that? How could open access re to research can affect the quality of research? Very good point. So there are issues around the quality of research. There's no question about that. There are, in fact, a class of what are called predatory journals that are not journals at all, but just pretend to be journals to take people's money. Though it, they are a serious problem, open access has created that problem and we need to deal with it. So let me explain the approach that we're taking because our system, open journal systems, is a tool that some small number of predatory journals use. What's involved in this is building trust in research. What's involved in this is researchers and journals sharing the basis of that trust. Right now, peer review is the key element that distinguishes research from other forms of knowledge. Peer review is the check on the quality of knowledge. And peer review contributes to the improvement of that knowledge. But is every journal in the world doing the same level of peer review? We don't know. We don't know the peer review system of the very best journals, except for a small statement about it. We don't know how often or how many reviewers are involved. And so part of the argument of open access is if we're going to go public, then we need to make public how we create this knowledge we need to pull back the veil from peer review. It can still be anonymous, but we need to provide evidence that there has been peer review. We need to provide evidence that the editors are competent academics, that the editorial board is made up of members with expertise in the field of the journal. And so our efforts as a scholarly, uh, producing scholarly publishing software will be to build checks into the, into the publishing platform. We need to have ways of the public knowing what the ingredients are. When you buy a can of, of beans, you can see on the can what the ingredients are. We're building systems for journals that will show you what's inside the journal, and we're building checks. So the journal doesn't determine this, but that third parties coordinate electronically the checks on the peer review process. So that's a complicated answer. I hope it was not too hard to follow, but I'd be happy to answer further questions on it. So we take very seriously the quality. And the important principle, let me just say this again, is that if you make research public, you need to make public how that research is produced. And we didn't need to make it public before because we didn't have, it wasn't a public aspect. Everybody knew the inside story. But now that it's being made public, we have a responsibility to make public how we are producing that research. 
Well, then uh, what you what you have said uh, reminded me something else. I think uh, we should make the difference between uh, uh, predatory journals and uh, no usual journals. What can you say? What kind of journals could be uh, considered as predatory journals? Well, I, I have to say, and again, this gets complicated again, that predatory journals are often just journals people don't like the look of. They're often journals from the global south that don't have very fancy designs. Um, we have found a, a number of journals called predatory who are trying very hard to be and have every right to be called legitimate journals. So the label is because everything is closed, it's hard to know what the integrity of the journal is. The ethics of the journal itself are not transparent. So rather than trying to guess if a journal is legitimate, we're building tools that will help the public and scholars determine. And those tools will involve checks with other organizations. So the journal doesn't decide, the journal is in connection with another organization that verifies. So we're going to build trust through verification. It's like research. Only it's based on the idea that we have a new responsibility to be clear about the integrity of research when research is public. Well, then you say that. I, I understand that you, uh, peer review process will also be uh, transparent in this open uh, access system. Am I yeah. right? Yes. Transparency is the principle. And you need to recognize that we haven't had to be transparent in the past. You knew the journals, you knew the editors because you are an academic, because you're part of that community. But now that we're global and now that we're public, we need a new level of transparency. So the academic ethics here is going into a new area, a new realm of responsibility. It is ethical to publish research only in a transparent way with external checks on that integrity. Well, uh, uh, academic ethic uh, lies uh, are based on some values. Uh, and one of the values is transparency in uh, academic value. Academic uh, ethics lies on transparency. I mean, we need to be transparent if you want to be ethical. And also we need, we need to be socially responsible to uh, our uh, job, to our society and uh, etc. cetera. Uh, I read your paper, The Academic Ethics of Open Access to Research Scholarship. And uh, I want to congratulate you that it was really a really uh, informative uh, paper. And I, got, I learned a lot of things from them. And I came across a uh, term there called ethical rights of academicians. What, how can you define ethical rights of academic academicians? Okay, can I- In I, terms I, of knowing the knowledge. Um, let me just be clear though, that the paper was written with Juan Pablo Alperin. So I have a, the, one of the ethics of research is to acknowledge your co-authors. Yeah, yeah. So Juan was a student of mine at the time and was a very major contributor. So when I speak about this paper, I'm speaking uh, on behalf of Juan and myself. And the ethical right um, for researchers, I would say goes two ways. One is a, a right to, uh, to this knowledge, that is to have access to the knowledge. Um, and it is a right to expect the research will be, will have integrity and will be shared. So it is, uh, it is important to share the work um, but that's not sufficient. That's necessary, but not sufficient. And uh, the series that the concept that you've introduced of academic ethics um, is broader than just that aspect. So there is a right, um, and that right is involves a responsibility. Okay. Uh, well, our association, I, I, I am the founder of this association and I have been trying uh, really hard since 2018 to develop it. 
And thanks God, uh, so many uh, academicians from Turkey recognize the uh, necessity for an association uh, as an uh, uh, academician from the states, uh, an experienced academician from the states. What can you advise me to develop it more? <laughs> Um, well, you've taken a very important step by starting a journal, yeah. um, because uh, the journal is a way of giving a focus. The journal is a way of giving people opportunities to address the ethics. Um, and a journal is an important way to demonstrate what you mean by ethics. So anything you can do to increase the transparency of your journal would be a step in the right direction. For example, do you list every year the, all of the names of all the reviewers for your journal? Hmm. Uh, well, uh, we have the first, uh, we f published it for the first time. This, ah. Yeah, it is the first time we published it. Congratulations. So, yeah, I, I, we are planning to do that. Uh, uh, we, we, we should be care about the transparency of the uh, journal. Yes. You can also uh, make sure that the journal is widely available by um, having it in the directory of open access journals, getting it indexed. You can uh, share as much information as you can about the process behind the journal, the number of reviewers, giving credit to the reviewers, keeping it anonymous still, but be being as it were, exemplifying that form of transparency, it's an important element. Um, do you have a, a, a conference every year? Do you have opportunities for faculty to come together and students? Well, um, we are planning to uh, arrange and uh, we are planning a conference in next next year, 2022, yes. in, uh, in May. Uh, we are we are getting ready for that uh, so uh, we, we in fact we are doing a, a variety of activities to increase awareness about ethics in turkey and that conference be one of them well i would hope uh, hope very much Fari, that we can that you can meet in person and that you can have have the conference and, and have students and faculty come um, but yes that sounds like a very good way a good procedure a good process um, it sounds like you're it, d doing the right things um, in terms of, of holding this kind of um, organization together. Um, there is a group in the United States called Retraction Watch that tracks uh, violations of ethics. Um, Retraction Watch is a, has a journal that allows people to report what they feel are violations of research ethics. Um, and it's not a journal, it's more like a blog, um, but it, it plays an important role. So there are the positive things that we do in ethics, and then there are the checks on the negative things that we are accountable. Um, and that retracting an article isn't always an ethical breach, it can be a mistake, it can be just a simple mix up. Um, but it is uh, an ethical principle to report and to be very transparent about retraction, about mistakes. They can sometimes be malicious and intentional, um, but often they're just mistakes, but people still are embarrassed and tend to hide them. And so if you provide a supportive environment for sharing mistakes and sharing infractions, then you are supporting uh, the other side of ethics. Okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you for reminding that uh, organization. Well, we, we want to uh, do, we want to cooperate with the institutions in the States or in other countries as well. Who do you, do you suggest us to uh, get in touch with? Ah, um, there are uh, the learned societies. So the, the, the scholarly societies have a concern with academic ethics. Um, and there are a number of uh, 
organizations that bring them together. So all the different societies. In the United States, we have something called the National Academies. And the National Academies, which include education, engineering, medicine, but the National Academies is a single organization of all the other organizations. And they have an interest in ethics. So that the National Academies in the United States, another group would, is called the Learned Councils. And the Learned Councils, it, again, brings together different societies around common interests. And so academic ethics cuts across disciplines in a way that these organizations do as well. Um, and there would be many of these in Europe, uh, in the UK, in North America, um, and elsewhere. Uh, a group like Capes in Brazil would be uh, interested as well. Um, so there, uh, I would think about these organizations as potential um, recipients or part, maybe not partners, I'm not sure they would go that far, but they would be interested. Okay, so I'll get try to get in touch with with them. Uh, these are my questions. Dolunay, do you have any questions to John? Is Hello, so, you very much. PA student in friend. I was I. Um, I'm very happy to hear you and Fahri Hoca, Fahri Apaydın, thank you for the intervention. I haven't got any question. Okay, thank you. Well, John, uh, this pandemic showed us something. Uh, we should act uh, together ag again uh, uh, to the, uh, uh, we should act together for the uh, uh, actions, for the uh, uh, events. Uh, uh, we should try to find uh, common solutions to them. Uh, academic ethic is also another problem. Uh, it's a wide, uh, worldwide problem, I believe. Uh, we should act together to uh, uh, to uh, uh, deal with it. I think. What do you What do you say about that? Uh, Fari, I would say it's. Uh, I wouldn't treat it just as a problem. I wouldn't. I would balance the negative and the positive. So I would treat it as an opportunity to do better. I would treat it as a, a way of improving the contribution of academics to the world. Um, there are negative elements. There are scandals around um, autism and vaccinations and re that research, has research has contributed to. So there are, there are difficult moments, but I would suggest to you very respectfully that you consider both the positive opportunities that ethics involves of making a greater contribution, having greater integrity to that contribution and the negative side, that there are violations of ethics, that there are violations of rights to knowledge and rights involving knowledge. So do you see the possibility of that balance of the positive, not just the balance, but leading with the positive and and putting the negative second. What do you think? Well, uh, we are main. Our association is mainly focused on the positive side. I mean, we uh, we say uh, academic ethics will help uh, development of uh, science, development of uh, societies, uh, and we should respect that. I mean, as academicians, we should respect academic uh, ethics. We we should be careful about that, and we we should also teach our uh, students. Uh, how important academic ethic is for the society and for their education. Uh, we should, uh, uh, if people are aware of this, uh, I, aware of this fact, I believe they will uh, uh, do more ethical uh, uh, behaviors or they will make ethical research. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that is the contribution. Um, and it, I, I wouldn't start from the assumption they are unethical that they're not ethical, I would start from the assumption that they can improve uh, on an ethical basis. Starting point is important, you say? 
the starting point is, but, but um, also the assumption that people are basically ethical to start with. They're not unethical. And that they need opportunities and guidance to improve the integrity, the ethics, the moral basis. And open access is only one example, but I think it's an important one. There are many others as well, in terms of how you treat your research subjects, how you report your data. Um, but I, my particular interest is in the sharing aspect. I can agree with you. Yeah, you are right. I mean, uh, most people, if they are doing unethical uh, actions, or most of the time, they are not aware of that. Uh, that that's why they are doing that uh, malicious things. Uh, if we make them be aware, uh, we, we will increase, decrease unethical behaviors and unethical actions, I guess. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, John, for uh, for your time. You spent. Uh, you, I know you, that you are very busy. You spared uh, almost half an hour for us, and you shared your experience and uh, you shared with us very uh, important, very valuable knowledge. Thank you for uh, for your uh, time, uh, and uh, I hope we will uh, we will be in touch. Uh, we will keep in touch. Uh, and we can do some other activities together. And I want to thank Yusuf Istanbulat as well. And uh, I want to yes. thank uh, Dolna Yazi for uh, attending this meeting. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. And see you soon, uh, John. Okay. Well, thank you for this opportunity. And again, my appreciation to you and to Turkey, uh, the Turkish scholars who have been supporting my project by using our software. This is, it's been a great association. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye